Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're looking at weighted averages from section 2.9. Our learning targets are first to be able to solve mixture problems and second to be able to solve distance equals rate times time problems. All these deal with weighted averages in some form or another and we're going to um, be working on, on different types of excuse me different types of problems related to that. Okay, so let's look a little further at this. A mixture problem is is going to have two or more parts that are combined together to make a whole and it does that using weighted averages so it might um, tell you we're going to use X percent of this ingredient and a different percentage of another and we want a total percentage that's a certain amount and we want to see then um, how we get to that and how much of one we'll need to add or, or how much of the other we'll need to add that kind of question so let's look exactly at at uh, one example so here it says that Sarah has 16 cups of a punch that's 3% fruit juice and she also has a punch that is 33% fruit juice and the question then is how many cups of the 33% punch will she need to add to the 3% punch to end up obtaining a punch that is 20% fruit juice. So basically its situation is this. She's got uh, one kind of punch that has 3% juice in it. Um, she's got another kind of punch that has 33% juice in it. She wants to end up with a 20% juice mixture and we got to find out how much of the 33% punch does she need to add to the 16 cups of the 3% punch to make it all work out. And there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, I'm going to show you first the way the book would do it. And they make a table and and then you can certainly solve that way. And then I'll show you a second way um, that some people think is a little bit easier but um, let's let's see what works for you and either method is fine with me. So let's look at method one. We're going to make a table and then go ahead and and solve from that. So we have a table, we got the amount of punch, the, the amount of fruit juice, um, and we have the percentages over here. So we got 3% juice, there's 16 cups that was given in the problem. The total amount of fruit juice then that we would have is 0 0.03 times the 16 cups because it's 3% juice, so this is the amount of juice that would be in it. The second one is we have a 33% um, juice mixture. We don't know how many cups yet. That's what we need to find out. It says X cups. And 0.33 times however many cups we have is the amount of fruit juice that we'll have. So right now again we're setting up the table and then we'll use this information to get our equation and solve it in just a moment. Our target is a 20% juice. We know that the amount then is going to be 16 cups of the 3% plus X cups of the 33%. So our total amount then would be 16 plus X cups. Again, we don't know what X is yet. We're still going to be working that out. And then the total amount of fruit juice, if you look at it, will be 20% um, or 0.2 times 16 plus X. So if you look at this and come across here, there's 20% juice, there's 16 plus X cups. So if we multiply those two things together, that's how much actual fruit juice that we'll have uh, in our mixture. So now we can get our equation from this as well. Our equation is simply going to be 0.3, or excuse me, 0 0.03, that's right from right here, times 16, plus 0.33 times x, again that comes from over here, and that's going to equal then our total amount of fruit juice, which would be 0 0.20 times 0.16, or excuse me, times 16 plus x. So that's this amount over here is the total. So this is our equation that we can use to actually solve for it. Okay, now, now we're just going to use the rules we've already learned and go ahead and solve this equation. So let's look at this as we, we go along here. So first, multiplying out what we have here and, and then... Uh, doing one step on this side we get 0 0.03 times 16 equals 0 0.48 still have our our 0.33x 
Then we take this 0 0.20 and distribute it to the 16 and get 3.20 and then to the x and we get 0 .2, 0.20x. So this is our equation now. Let's just work our way through it. We're going to first subtract uh, 0.48 from both sides and now we end up with 30, or 0.33x equals 2.72 plus 0.20x. Again, um, first step, all we did is subtract 48 uh, hundredths or 0.48 from both sides. Now the next step, what we're going to do is go ahead and combine our x terms. So we're going to subtract 0.20x from both sides. That leaves us then with 0.13x equals 2.72. And then our final step is divide both sides by uh, 0.13 and we end up with x equals 20.92 cups. So that's how much of the 33% juice that would need to be added to end up with the final mixture that they desired, which was a 20% juice. Okay, so if they added 20.92 cups of the 33% juice to the original 16 cups of the 3% juice, we would end up then with a 20% juice mixture, which was our target. So that's how the mixture problems work. Now I'm going to show you a second method to solve the same problem. Again, some people like the second method more, um, some prefer the first, um, but I want you to have a couple options at least to solve these. The second way to solve it involves a teeter-totter. Um, hopefully when um, you're growing up you had a chance to get on a teeter-totter and if you haven't yet you still do. Um, one of the reasons that an adult uh, can sit on a teeter-totter with a small child and still make it balance is by using some of the laws of physics and and placing himself or herself closer to the center than the child is and, and with that um, you can balance it out because a, a fundamental rule of physics in this and, and I'll simplify it a little bit, I'll oversimplify it a little bit, but basically if you take the weight times the distance, um, so let's say consider this to be a weight over here and the distance from the center and we multiply it on one side, the, the weight times the distance would have to equal the weight times the distance on the other side. And if, if it does, then it's balanced. And that's how we can use a system like this to solve the equation as well. So let's look at that same problem again. And what I want you to do is start on the left side of the teeter-totter and let's put the weakest solution we have in the problem. And if we remember in the problem it said we have a 3% solution, 3% juice, that's our weak one. Our strong one was a 33%. We're going to put that percentage on the right hand side. And then uh, we're going to put along with it um, the number or the amount of each juice. So the 3% one there said there were 16 cups. The 33% one it said we didn't know how many so we called that X. And then the center, this percentage up here, this 20% was our target number. So we're going to put that in the middle of the teeter-totter because that's where we want to end up uh, and then everything will be balanced out at that point. Okay, so we set it up that way. And then now we simply look at what's the difference between 3 and 20. Well, that would be 17. Um, so we'll put that here. That's, that's what we'll use as our distance in our calculation. Remember, we said weight times distance equals weight times distance. On this side, from 20 to 33 is a difference of 13. So we can simply write the number 13. We don't have to put a percent or anything like that. We just look at the raw numbers 20 to 33. The difference is 13. So now we have our distance and the weight that we'll use in this. It said there were 16 um, units of the 3% solution. It said there are x units of the other. So now we just simply set up our equation. Weight times distance equals weight times distance. So 16 times 17 on the left side, that's taking this and this, has to equal 13 times x on the right side. Again, x is what we're trying to find out. So if we multiply 16 times 17, we get 272. If we multiply 13 times x, we get 13x. Now all we need to do is divide both sides by 13 to figure out how many uh, cups that we would have. And if we do that, um, 20.92 would be our answer. And notice, 
20.92 is exactly the same answer that we got in the question before right here. So both methods will work. It's a question of which one do you find um, easier for you to use. And we'll be talking about all these in class as well, but uh, hopefully you've written these down. If you haven't, you can certainly stop the tape and look at it again and write those down. Um, in the book, they'll have similar examples to the first way I did it. And then I can certainly show you more about the teeter-totter method uh, as well. Um, to me, that works a little simpler, but uh, it depends how you, how you like to approach the problem and, and what works best for you. Okay, one other thing we said we wanted to do is look at distance equals rate times time and figure out a way to solve those problems. So the formula that we'll use in these is, is again, distance equals rate times time, or D equals RT. In the example we have here, um, we simply have a boat that travels 52 miles in one and a half hours, and then goes 18 miles in 0.75 hours. We want to find what the average speed of the boat is. That's the question. So our formula we're going to use is D equals RT. And what we're going to do first is find out what's the total of distance that it's traveled. So we look at all the distances the boat has traveled. Well, it's gone 52 miles and it's gone 18 miles. So we're going to add up the total miles would be 70. That's the total distance traveled. And then we're going to look at the total time it took to go those distances. Said it took 1.5 hours for the 52 miles and it took 0.7 mi or excuse me, 0.75 miles um, for the 18 miles. Um, or 0.75 hours, excuse me, for the 18 miles. So that equals 2.25 hours total. So our total distance is 70. Our total time is 2.25 hours. So we're simply going to divide the two because if we look at this formula, distance equals rate times time, if we divide both sides by the time, we end up with distance over time equals our rate. And that's what we're trying to find, and this one is the rate. So if we divide our total distance of 70, divided by our total time of 2.25 hours, then our final average speed of the boat would be 31.1 miles per hour. So that's a distance equals rate times time problem. I hope some of this is helpful, and I look forward to talking to you in class very soon. Thanks very much for listening, and have a very good day, and we'll see you soon. Take care.